Greetings, I'm Mr. Poley. And I'm Mr. Dolson. And welcome to our complete guide to flipping the urban classroom. First of all, we've got to speak to this. What, what exactly is flipping, flipping the classroom? This is a situation where students get direct instruction uh, of all our core content uh, at home through, through a video, through a video that we have produced as teachers. In class instruction, when they return to school, in class instruction becomes more dynamic and more interactive. We as instructors, we guide students through application and transfer activities um, to try to uh, improve their uh, understanding of uh, the information. So what does a typical day look like? Students have been assigned a, a flip video as prior homework so that when they actually get to class, they just take a brief quiz to keep everybody accountable so that we can jump right into a warm-up activity that allows them to uh, recall the basic video details and then organize that information in useful ways so that they can start on the good stuff with that information in hand. Okay. Now this is what flipping the classroom enables and this is the primary reason why Mr. Dolson and I have chosen to flip our classrooms. Is with all the time that we've recovered, we have more time to do great things like experiential learning, cooperative learning, peer editing, debates, skits, presentations, and dialogues, as well as independent projects. And we now have one-on-one -on -one time available with all this recouped time. We can spend time with each of our students on a daily basis uh, as is needed. But it's flipping the urban classroom that we're talking about. And so we should say what we mean when we say urban. Uh, but we can only speak to our experience. So we're from Thomas Jefferson High School, which is in Richmond Public Schools in Richmond, Virginia. And we deal with issues of poverty. Uh, our entire school district qualifies for the community eligibility provision, which allows all of our students to have free breakfast and lunch during the day. There's also a history of racial inequality in Richmond. And we have a, a population of students who are 80% African American, 9% white, 9% Hispanic. And because of the inequality in terms of economics and in terms of race, there's a serious technology gap in our students at home access. But also because we are underfunded as a district, uh, we struggle with facilities maintenance challenges and also technology access challenges in the school building. Okay. Now, here's a slide um, giving us uh, details from August of 2000 about the digital divide. And this is something that our students face. Uh, at home, the students of the, uh, uh, whose families have less, than an uh, uh, less of an income less than $25,000, they only have access, um, students from age 6 to 17, their access is at approximately about 32%. And if, right there, and when these students get to school, uh, the school helps us close that uh, digital divide. Uh, students of the same income, less than $25,000, uh, reach the nearly and just above the 70% level. Now, um, this leads to some obvious questions, of course. Uh, unique considerations for us to, to think about. Access. Tech access at home, both hardware and software. Our students have uh, limitations based upon uh, which are, are uh, derived or come out of their uh, out of family incomes for the most part. Um, this leads us to the fact that uh, if we try to start a bring your own device program um, at our school, that makes it more difficult. And um, just to get tech at school, um, we're an older facility. Uh, our school is a historic school from 1930. Um, we, we're currently experiencing um, some significant tech challenges at our school. Uh, management if issues uh, in the urban classroom. Uh, we generally have more behavioral issues on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, in my classroom and other, other similar classrooms, there's an increased number of, uh, of students from the exceptional education population. But there are also incredible opportunities uh, that are presented by a flipped classroom for an urban setting. Like, our students will have more consistent access to technology, and we'll be able to have them learn technology skills in an instructional setting. And while they're doing that, we're not just giving them the skills without any sense of how, you know, why and when to use them. We'll be teaching them the ethical frameworks for using these digital skills. And that goes right into digital citizenship, how you participate in online communities. And it's not just online, we're also looking at them growing in the school community because they are expected to go home and learn information on their own, come into class ready to participate in that uh, classroom community 
that self-directed learning, we're really hoping will lead to responsibility in our students.